Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fantasy Football Scout as we look ahead to game week 28. My name is Joe and today we'll be looking to see who's due a goal or assist using Fantasy Football Scout's trusty goals and assists imminent tables. As usual, I'm joined by Fantasy Football Scout's Deputy Editor Tom Freeman. Welcome, Tom. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay, thanks, Joe. Yeah, um, game week 27, got 82 points. So, yeah, reasonably content with that. And uh, Villa got the win as well. So, mm. yeah, all good. Definitely. Mm. Yes, it was a good, lots of green arrows um, around this week. Mm. Or some red arrows. It was quite it was quite close. I think I was uh, in with a, a tight squeak into a green arrow territory, but it's a very high scoring week. Yeah, well, it wasn't looking great for me because I don't own Foden. I've got a yeah. City triple up with um, Haaland, De Bruyne and Alvarez. So it wasn't looking good on Sunday. But then I own Ben White, who got the, ah. the goal and the clean sheet last night. And that kind of helped me reel it back in a bit. So, um, yeah, it finished OK. Excellent. Um, uh, just reminded to everyone, do press that like button and also do subscribe so you can be up to date with all our latest videos and podcasts and check out any membership offers that are going at the moment at fantasyfootballscout.co.uk to help you climb up your mini leagues. Uh, welcome to those early joining us in the live chat. Uh, Daniel, DJ, Animations, J77Lag, Rodrev, um, Adam and many more. If one, one or two of you could just say that you can see and hear us fine. I don't have any playback function, so I'm assuming... Uh, you can, but if you can just say that, that'll be that'll be great in the chat. Um, the, the interesting live chat already started. Daniel was saying his defence is a mess. Help, and then DJ replies, "Your life's a mess, more like." So controversial start in the live chat already. Um, I'm sure his oh, life isn't a mess. It's just his defence. Um, and FPL <laughs> is separate to our lives. We must always remember that uh, our, our actual real life. It's just fantasy. Um, Rodrev says he can see and hear us. That is great stuff. Um, okay, let's let's crack on. Let's see how we got yep. on with uh, the goals and assists imminent tables last week. Uh, it's a see. Well, there's there's a few blanks, but a lot of goals, <laughs> a lot of assists. So we did we did pretty well um, on the goals imminent table. Solanke let us down. Um, let's just dwell on him for a second. So we'll. We hope that he's still on the table. Um, it's going to be popular yeah. captaincy. Um, faces, I mean, the, the best fixture. He's just had Bur Burnley. He's got Sheffield and L Sheffield United and Luton up next. Um, uh, so um, that is that is quite um, the quite the fixtures. But mm. I don't know. I mean, you you've been covering the matches for Fantasy Football Scout. He didn't score against Burnley, but. Um, I mean, how's he, how's he looking? Is he, is he he's still carrying a knock? Well, he had this knee issue, didn't he? Which uh, meant that he missed the FA Cup game against Leicester City last week. He passed a late fitness test and he actually played for 88 minutes on Sunday. So longer than I think a lot of people expected. Um, he didn't look 100% sharp, but um, I think that was to be expected because mm. he hadn't trained in the week. Yeah. He'd probably missed three or four days of training. And I think Areola mentioned that after the match. And that was the reason he said with more training, he'll be back to his usual oh, self. Okay. Um, he did have a good chance in the match. He missed, um, I think it was Clover who played him in and he created a couple of chances for Semenyo. But yeah, I think if you don't own him, it's a bit of a no brainer this week. Yeah. He's got the fixtures. He's yeah. the talisman. He's on penalties. Get him in. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think with... Um... Uh, those who don't have the triple captaincy, who, who haven't used the triple captaincy, this looks like the, the key week to use it, isn't it? Looks, I think so, because, I mean, we all watched Sheffield United last night and the they have been better away, but they're just a mess. Um, and then you've obviously got that Luton game as well after. Luton, you know, a much better team than Sheffield United, but they still leaky, yeah. still concede a lot of goals. So, yeah, I think if I still had that chip, Bearing in mind that you you might be wanting to use bench boosts and wild card around the other double game weeks, then uh, yeah, I think he's a, he's a great option. Um, another striker with Luton is Morris, uh, who won't figure mm. on these tables because he's he's not goals imminent. His goals arrived, um, so he is fully formed. Um, two away games though for Luton. There was a lot of chat yeah. doing the FPL Generals video yesterday, um, and there was a lot of chat there about uh, moving Harlan to Morris. Which yeah, which sounds odd until you look at the fixtures and the fixtures. Mm. So Man City have got Liverpool away, then a blank, and then Arsenal at home. Meanwhile, Morris has Crystal Palace and Bournemouth in the one game week, and then he comes straight out of that to Nottingham Forest, um, and he plays in twenty nine. Um, so he's handy then if you're not free hitting, for example. 
Um, and then he's got Tottenham, who do concede as well, and straight away after 30. So we concluded that whilst it was stupid uh, on paper, <laughs> it sounds odd, um, and people have just clip him and me saying, um, oh, yeah, yeah, swap Harlan for Morris. It actually does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does, because you're getting four games against Harlan's two. And um, Morris has been doing OK recently. He's on penalties. I think he's got nine goal involvements in his last nine matches. So, yeah, normally that would sound absolutely balmy suggesting that. But just over a very short period of three mm. game weeks, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Morris outscored Harland um, in that period. In fact, he, he probably will. I yeah. mean, this is Harland. Yeah. You know, he could go, he could hit a hat trick um, in the game against Arsenal at home. Mm. But I think when you look at those, those Luton fixtures, because it's okay, they've got the double game week, but then they've got Forrest at home after that in the blank. It's not a bad little run, is it? So um, I, I get, I mean, people have been talking about selling Foden as well, potentially this week with that. If you had to, would, would you do that given the form that he's in, Joe, or is that just a, a no-go? I, I would, and I and I and I and my mm. well, we'll do a team reveal video a bit later. We'll they'll go out tonight, but um, yeah, Foden out is in my thoughts, and yeah. um, the, I think the thing with Foden for Fo, for those with Foden is that he's obviously a reluctant sell, um, mm. but at some point, because of the double game weeks, because of the other fixtures for the other teams. There will be a point where we're all going to face with that decision. Oh, no, I've got to get rid of Phil Foden. And that, unfortunately, was for some in game week 27, particularly those that wildcarded then. Um, and yeah. as, as we can see uh, on this on this table, yeah, he scored two goals. And so a handsome haul there. But um, some might have to get rid of him this week. Game week 29, he's not playing. So he's got two tough fixtures in the blank. And for me, I've earmarked him as for Salah. Um, yeah. So Salah at home is captainable um, against Brighton, um, indeed, in game week 30. And looking at the fixtures, then he's got Sheffield United, which has been talking about uh, 31. Yeah. So Salah's like a key player around then. Foden, meanwhile, um, has Arsenal and then Aston Villa. So not as good. And obviously he could, especially in that Villa game, he could score. Um, but... Yeah, that's the choice. It's just difficult, isn't it? Because you've obviously got Saka, who's got that tough game in 30, but then I think he plays Luton after that at home. Mm. Son has obviously got Luton in 30, mm. so you want you want him for that, don't yeah. you? And of course, you want a City attacker, but you're probably going to favour Haaland. So yeah, it, it is difficult. Um, it's not because Foden's a bad option at all. He's brilliant at the moment. He's playing unbelievable, but it's just very hard to accommodate everybody. Now, I'm, I'm working on a plan that by 30, I'll have Haaland. So I've got a, a bit of the Man City pie. I'll have Son, because of his good fixtures, and I'll have Salah. And with those three, I think I can... Yeah. Um, that covers a lot of everyone else's captain, basically. Yeah, I think that's the probably the three best assets in the mm, game, yeah. especially when, when, when Son's playing through the middle, um, which he, of course, did at the weekend. Mm. Um, uh, speaking of best assets... Um, Speaking of, well, on the flip side, <laughs> worst assets. assets. Um, Calvert-Lewin, we're just going to skip over. He's a dud. He's a dud. He hasn't mm. scored since October. He's always going to be imminent. He's Nathan Redmond. He's just, we're just going to sketch over him. But I'll keep him there because one day he'll score. Um, mm. But Fernandez and Rashford got, got us returns. The assist from Fernandez, goal from Rashford. But it was an isolated incident, wasn't it, in that, in that city, in the city game? Um, they weren't at their best and there was a huge golf and um, we can't get anyone to go to, towards Manchester United, can we? No, I don't think so. I mean, the only thing to briefly discuss is the setup change at City. Ganacho was back on the right, Rashford was on the left and Fernandez had this kind of free role in between them. And um, Eric Ten Hag was asked after if that could be an option for future game weeks. And he said, potentially. Okay. Um, and if and if Fernandez was in that free role, if Man United maybe double in 34, something like that, then he might be of interest. I think he's got four assists in his last six. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, not for now. No. Very difficult to say, look at United now, but they, they might come onto the radar before the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I've got Garnacho still and I'm keeping him. He's just a great neighbour. Yeah. Um, happy first sub, um, happy to play him. I mean, 
yeah. uh, as a will. And obviously Manchester United fixtures going forward, obviously they blank in 29, but they're not too bad. And Hoyland could be back um, to shore up yeah. the attack. Got Brentford away, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home. That's, you know, you know, um, you know, anything can go in there, but I, I you'd expect Liverpool to win quite well. And then they've got yeah. Bournemouth away. So they're not bad fixtures, but um, mm. I think uh, other than Garnacho, I can't see going there. Yeah, we, we, I think we might need a double to go back there. But yeah, um, yeah. let's see. Yeah, so. it could be in game of 34. There could be a double there for mm. Manchester United. We don't know at this stage. Um, okay, uh, Neto Wolves, uh, blanked, injured. Um, I don't know what the latest is for his injury, whether he'll be out this weekend. Just, no, I think it was just precautionary. Oh, I'm pretty okay. sure O'Neill said after the game that it was a tight hamstring. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem for Wolves at the moment is that Cunha and Huang are out, um, which obviously blunts them and attack a little yeah. bit. But uh, if you own Neto, he's probably a hold for this week with yep. the with the Fulham game at Molyneux. Definitely. Um, next up, Phil Foden. We've, I mean, we've spoken about him. It's more of a strategy thing. There's no doubting him. He's in the form yeah. of his life. Two goals yeah. here. Um He's one of those players because, you know, investment in Man City sort of waning off a bit now. People are starting to think to move, but it is a tricky one. I'm, and I'm going to keep him and field him for the um, Liverpool game. Yeah. I'm, I'm, anything I get from him will be a surprise, but it, you need a player of that quality in order to get it because it's the Liverpool game and then they've got the Arsenal game afterwards. It's it's during that period where you want wow. to. But yeah, as I said, I'll, I'll probably be moving him, him on game at 30. Yeah, I mean, he does feel pivotal for that team at the moment, doesn't he? He's gone up um, just another level this year. So I think playing him at Liverpool is fine. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if that game ended 2-2, something like that. And then you've got a chance of a Foden goal involvement. So, I mean, yeah, I think he's fine to hold as well as as well as sell. It depends. It's team dependent, isn't it? It uh, is. Um, something I has briefly crossed my mind. I think it's good to have sort of the main player from the main team. And at the moment, I think that's Haaland. But arguably, it might be Foden. And so those mm. with Foden and Haaland who are facing the choice of having to remove one to afford all these other players we want in doubles and blanks and so forth. Um, th- those who are moving Haaland to Fo- to Morris, they can keep Foden. Um, they've got they freed up a whole bunch of cash and they could end up over the next three game weeks be the winners. Perhaps. Mm, yep. Perhaps. Have to wait and see. I mean, it's 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 kind of scary going out without Haaland, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. um he's not he's not totally at his best at the moment, but he missed that absolute sitter, didn't mm. he, on Sunday? And if that goes in, then he's then he's probably finishing the game on twelve points. Yeah. Yeah. Um so he doesn't need to be playing particularly well as we've seen in the past. So it I mean that'd be a pretty bold call going without Haaland for the running and going with Foden. But if you're chasing rank and you mm. want to try something yeah. different, then 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 maybe you'd go for that. Uh, uh, next name's Willian. Um, I think still still injured, isn't he for Fulham? But Fulham's fixtures there on the fixture ticker at Fancy Football Scout. Bournemouth are top, understandably, with their double game week, and they've got really favourable fixtures afterwards with Everton, Crystal Palace, Luton, and Manchester United. Luton also very favourable. They've got these favourable. Uh, these got these away fixtures. 28 and Nottingham Forest 29 uh, but it's Fulham who are second they've got Wolves away they've got Tottenham at home it's a good fixture for attackers Sheffield United away well we know what that is that's basically 5-0 uh, Nottingham Forest away can score their Newcastle defence still not great and West Ham um, so Fulham assets so we want William to be back I guess uh, but you know Munez lo- lots of options at Fulham as well they could be the handy differentials we need yeah, he did come on as a sub at the weekend, oh, okay. William. He kept, he played 20 minutes ah. um, off the bench. So he's coming back. Mm-hmm. The, the only, I was reading, I forget which account it was. It was an X account, um, Fulham tactical one. And I was reading up on this match. And apparently in the last couple of games, I haven't watched much for Fulham, but apparently the wide players have really been tucking in. It's been like a, a tactical change by Silva. So they've been playing much closer to the okay. striker. And I think I'm right in saying that it's been um, Iwobi and Andreas who have been favoured in those kind oh, of tucking right. in roles. Now, whether that means Villian, of course, can play that role. Does he come straight back in? But they're playing well at the moment. So there's there's maybe no guarantee there. Um, but I do agree that Fulham may be a, chan- a team to look at because they play Spurs in 29, don't they? And we yeah. know that Spurs concede goals. Yeah. Munitz has just been... One, he's like looked really good. Mm. Two, his stats are, are very, very good. He's taken a lot of shots. So he could be that kind of enabler. Mm. If you need to free up some money somewhere, yeah. you can play in 29. 
you can play and you can play after that as well. You can play in thirty and thirty one and probably thirty two at home against Newcastle. So um he's interesting. Yeah, also I mean for those free hitting as well, I think I'll probably get him in if I'm having a two attackers. Yeah. And but unfortunately I might bench him. But a good first sub. Um mm -hmm. but because of you've on a free hit you can start getting going down, you're getting Son and Bowen and though and obviously Watkins, those types of players. So there yes. might not be any space for him but yeah if you're not i i think fulham i think they're a really good team for those doing what we do on this show really trying to spot those sort of differentials low owned gems under the radar gems to climb up the rankings yeah definitely i agree with you yeah there. and I, I do i do think i think with the free hit in 29 i mean i'm probably 70 30 to play it in 29 and looking at the fixtures and i get why some people are saying well i can probably get by if i've got tony and i've got bowen and i've got watkins and i've got those key players i can get by but for those on a free hit, you'll probably be able to get creative in two or three slots, mm -hmm. especially defensively, but maybe one or two midfield ones. So, you, you know, a fuller midfielder or somebody like um, Alanga or something like that, that, that might be that might be a way of trying to trying to try trying to kind of unlock a differential there. Yeah, Alanga is pretty much a lock on mine. Um, I do is like it, that yeah. Nottingham Forest fixture uh, mm -hmm. away to Luton. Yes. And I like I like him. Mm -hmm. We did a, um, a, ta a sort of a talisman table. Um, a while ago on one of these videos and um, there the surprising name Nodding Forest was Ilanga. Langer was the talisman yeah. then and I, and I don't think he's done anything different to suggest otherwise um, he's still involved heavily involved in their goal action yeah I mean Hudson Adoy is back in the team now but it was Langer who played through the middle um, you would expect him to be out wide um when I want he's fully fit, but a langer out wide against Luton with those full the those wing backs high up the pitch, he could do well. So um, Ramsey blank for us for Villa. Um you can probably uh answer this question. What what's the latest with him? Is he um injured long term, short term, precautionary? I don't don't think so. He came off with um a foot injury. And he'd had a problem with his foot before, but we are playing Ajax on Thursday, so we should get an Emory presser um, tomorrow. So we'll find out a bit more then. Don't think it's serious. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just moving you slightly. Uh, I'm trying to get you oh, more sorry. In, yeah, in the centre of the screen. There I'm, I'm, I'm probably... Uh, that's it, it's easier for you to move slouch. rather than me to move you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, just tell me to straighten up. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'd uh, uh, momentarily forgotten the button to sort of make the screen a bit like that. Um, okay, um, yeah, moving down the list. Uh, Madison, an assist, um, really. A lot of Spurs fans saying he's not sort of back to his best uh, at the moment. But nevertheless, he got on a, he's got a return and this is what he does. Um, Madison for 29, I think. Looks like a player I'd be getting in. I'm going to be targeting him alongside Son. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's not quite at his pre-injury levels, is he? I think everybody would agree with that. But I think he'll still tick along. And um, he's got a few assists, hasn't he, since he came back. I think that was his third at the weekend. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think if you're free hitting 29, you know, Son probably isn't going to gain you much. But Madison might if he does well. So. Definitely. And uh, moving on to the assist imminent table. So a few of these we could skirt over. Ericsson, people won't go there for Manchester United. Bernardo Silva, well, people are starting to think about ditching their city assets now. And so they're not mm -hmm. going to be investing in silver. And anyway, he's a sort of, you've got Haaland, Foden, KDB, um, you know, and you're not going to go for, for silver. There's only these three slots. Endo at Liverpool, I don't think people will go there. Um, but nevertheless, he, you know, he could, he, he's showing that he, he is being creative. Uh, Foden, we've spoke about there. He's got two goals, no assists. Um, so it remains to be seen if he's on the assists imminent table still. Um, Alfie Doughty, though, I'm uh, going to mention him. He's been, we've mentioned him a few times on the, well, quite a few times. Uh, I have anyway. Uh, here, uh, Yes, he got an assist. He was moved during the, I've got this right, he was moved during the game to more of a sort of a left wing back role and immediately Luton became more attacking. So that's the sort of, that yeah. we want, that's the Alfie Doughty I invested in a while ago that his new owners haven't seen much of, but we hope there's going to be in the two away games in the double. Yeah, so he started at left wing back, which is where you want him. Um, Bell went off after about five minutes. He'd been a doubt going into the game, but he didn't last very long. And that meant that Doughty went into this left-sided centre-back position. Now, it's not really where you want him. He's still got a threat from set pieces, though. But um, it really clicked for Luton in the second half when they... I'm not going to... I, don't, I can't remember the name, but they bought on the, the January signing, the Japan International, yes. they bought him yeah. on. And that shifted Doughty back to left wing back. That's when they clicked. Mm. That's when they started to pose a threat and they got the two goals. So 
they're gonna they they're gonna go out of their way to get him back into that position. And um yeah, for those not free hitting in um twenty nine, getting in Doughty makes absolute sense, yeah. doesn't it? Because you've got the double, yeah. you've got the game week twenty nine fixture. I think you'd be benching him after that for a couple of game weeks, but at four point seven it doesn't really matter, does it? No, so. definitely. He's a mainstay in my team and obviously will be in the double. Um Tavernier at Bournemouth. Um didn't get the assist. It remains to be seen if he's still on the assist imminent table for 28. That's where we want him. But it's still a bit of a minefield, isn't it? You've got Cliver um, uh, on the wing. You've got various other players um, in attacking midfield roles at Bournemouth. It's just hard to nail down who's going to start both. And Tavernier, I guess, is in with a shout. But mm. it's hard to guess, isn't it? Yeah, I thought he was he was really poor on Sunday. Um, he got in some good positions, but he just wasn't at it at all. Yeah. Now I know that the sinister is probably the main threat. I would have thought to his role, and he and he could get a start. I guess the turnaround for Bournemouth is good. They've got this double game week, and then they've got a big gap after that um, because they're that they're they're not involved in twenty nine. So in terms of rotation, I don't think it will be necessarily because of um, fitness. I think it will be more that. It'll be if they're not playing well or if he wants to freshen things up. I think, you know, Cliver got the goal and I thought he did OK at the weekend. I think Semenyo looked really good. So I think those two places are pretty assured for Sheffield United. And I think Tavernier probably plays, but there is that little bit of doubt with Sinistera there. Um, but I think he's still fine to bring in because I think over the two games, you're probably going to get, you know, 110 minutes at a minimum out of him, aren't you? I would have thought. Yeah. So I think he's OK, but there is a bit of risk there. Uh, next name on the list who rewarded us handsomely is Rodri two assists mm -hmm. there um, a lot of engaged managers won't go for him sort of a central defensive midfield player people not very popular in FPL um, don't get the points but he has been getting the points I mean I've uh, Sky managers will know I mean he's a mainstay there because he gets the passing the tackling um, certainly get, he gets the passing bonus um, he, he's getting those bonus in that game there so we can see what a good player is that doesn't necessarily translate to FPL but He's, he's getting he's getting the goals. He's getting the assists. He's, he's actually not a bad option. Only one player has more double-digit hauls than Rodri this season. Unbelievably. <laughs> Who is Salah. That? Salah. Only Salah's oh got God. more. He's got eight, 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 eight double-digit okay. hauls and Rodri's got six. No no player has wow. more than... Um, only, only Salah than, than Rodri. But there is a caveat with that, that I think his points per start average is like 4.5. So he tends to... When, it, when he tends to return... Yeah. He gets bonus because, of, like you say, Joe, because all of that yeah. passing stats, they yeah. feed into the FPL bonus system. Um, but, yeah, I think it was Will who said that, relayed that stat of the week. I couldn't believe it. I had to go and, go and check. Yeah. I thought, you know, there's quite a few players on six, but only Salah has more than Rodri. Wow. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're not looking at him, but... Um, it is that it is that bonus which really helps bump him up. Yeah, he's one of those players that other people will see in someone in their mini league thinking, how have they overtaken me? And they'll look at the team with Rodri. Yeah. And say, I never picked Rodri. But as you said, yeah. um, he's second only to Salah for double digit hauls. That's quite a stat. Yeah, mad. Um, yeah. Next name on the list, Eze at Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace for team, um, I've got Anderson in my team. Um, I played him last week. She got a return from him. Um, yeah. And I'll be keeping him. He's quite handy. Crystal Palace could double in a 34. So he could be quite handy. They've got a new manager, new ethos to attack. Um, they've certainly got, you know, in Eze, Elise, various other players. They've, they've certainly got, even Jordan Ayew, they've got those players to do that. Um, but they are bottom of the fixture ticket. They do have Luton at home, 28, then a blank. But then it's, it's kind of OK with Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth away. But then it gets awful with that, the worst fixtures you want, really. Man City and Liverpool in 32-33. But it's in 34 they might. So I can see Anderson just staying in my team. Um, but for this point of view, Eze, um, he's good. He's scoring. He's handy for a double, probably. But I wouldn't, you know, if someone got him in now and was free hitting in 29, yeah. Luton at home is a good game for him, isn't it? I think if you're free hitting, I think those fixtures are good because you get Luton, Forest and Bournemouth. And yeah. then if you're free hitting, you're probably then going to be wild carding 33, 34, 35, something like that. Yeah. So you might get an, you might get a double out of him as well if you yeah. if you delay that wild card. Um, he scored the free kick at the weekend. Um, they are still managing his minutes. Mm -hmm. I think Glasner spoke about that after. They're going to be careful with them, mm -hmm. but he's probably going to start after a week's training and probably get 75 minutes, which could be enough. So 
it's hard to look at Eze now with Bournemouth playing twice and Ross Barkley playing twice and things like that. But I actually think, I think he could actually do well. Um, and he's been really good. He's been really good for a while when he's played. It's just been injuries holding back, him back, hasn't it? So. Uh, for those in the live chat, after we do the latest goals and assists imminent tables, uh, we'll uh, invite questions from you. So do get your questions ready. I'll just read one out here because we've actually just answered it. So it's a Daniel asks, are Crystal Palace players a viable option? Well, we've just answered that. Yes, they are. Um, uh, and also just uh, there's a comment in the chat as well from ads saying as a captain for me so he's not doesn't feel that Solanke's 100% that's a bold call but nevertheless as we said as a is, is a player that um, could be good to get in um, now especially for free hitters Luton Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth next three and you get to avoid 29 if you free hit um, uh, Walton at Crystal Palace sticking with them uh, didn't get us um, a return but yeah, I mean, a new name for me, uh, Chris, was not someone I would ever consider, but is Wharton worth no. looking at? Perhaps when there's a double? Or mm. He's in the pivot in that new Glasner system, isn't he? So he's a bit deeper. I think he's next to Lerma, but I think it's those two attacking midfield spots okay. you want to be looking yeah. at. Eze, Jordan Ayew, Oli say when he gets back. I think they're the, they're the roles you want to look at. I'm trying to think why he's on this. Is he taking some corners or free? He must be set pieces. That's yeah. why he's on this table. But I'll have a look at that. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see on the latest assist in the table if he's still mm. there. Maybe some crosses are going in. Maybe he's getting mm. into certain positions. Yeah. Um, uh, Martinelli is next. Assist and a goal. Good returns. Um, huge amount of returns from Arsenal players. Um, yeah. Saka taken off at half time with a. I can't remember where he had illness and Martinelli was a yeah. cut. Um, but nothing Correct. serious for both of them, I don't believe. Um, no. So, uh, yeah, Martinelli, Arsenal, um, they got Brentford at home, then a blank, but then City. But then they got a nice nice run again, Luton, uh, Brighton and Aston Villa. Um, so game week 31 is when we're going to be starting to look at um, Arsenal players again, trying to get more of them in. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't, I don't rule out getting Martinelli in at some point soon. No, and a few people are looking at Havertz and what a turnaround he's had in the past few weeks as well. Um, looked looks really good in that centre forward role. Um, I don't know whether he's going to play it regularly enough for him to become an FPL option, but certainly at the moment he's doing it. You've obviously got Jesus coming back, and Trossard's been playing that false role not nine role a little bit as well. But yeah, I mean I've got Saka at the moment. I've got the two defenders, and that's probably what I would stick with. Um, but for those who want to do something a little bit different, Odegaard's been doing well as well, hasn't you, yeah. Joe, as well? Yeah. As, soon, as soon as I got rid of him, he, he turned into like salad, salad levels of output. So, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so that'll be interesting. Do you go the double defence midfielder or double midfield and one defender? Um, so yeah. yeah, a couple of different, different strategies there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I've got Gabriel Saka and I'm keeping my options open, but I don't rule out getting a Martinelli or Odegaard. Or getting Saliba, one of those mm. ones. Uh, depends where there's yeah. a space, I guess. Let's have a look at the latest goals imminent table. So he's on that, uh, especially head of 28. So I've highlighted um, any that have got a double. Um, so Solanke is top, um, suggesting um, what we already know, a bit under, under par against Burnley, but certainly a due return. He's actually been underachieving by at least uh, two goals over the last four matches. He's had four big chances. Mystery of them scored from one of them. Um, the reminder that once you get more than one goal, you're off this table in a good way. Uh, but if you don't get those expected goal delta stats, as in underperforming uh, what you're expected to get, then you are off in a bad way. Um, so he's had 10 shots inside the box, uh, 12 shots in total. Um, yeah, absolute lot captaincy for me. We've spoken about him before. Um, Alanga is a player I mentioned um, and this is why I want him. We he is the talisman for Nottingham Forest in terms of goal involvement, or rather was the last time we did this. Um, he's miss he's had seven big chances, missed six of them, has scored from one of them. I mean that's a phenomenal amount for a five point one player. He's had five shots on target, nine shots in total, eight of those from close range, and he's, he's been underperforming. So on top of that goal. He should have got nearly, nearly another one or two more. So he could be, could have been on three. I mean, one of those big chances. Um, yeah, this is why on game week twenty nine, I'm he's just in. He's just I'm going to play him. Yeah, I think a Forest midfielder definitely makes sense. And 
looking at these tables, he's the one to go for. You have got Gibbs White there who's on penalties, mm. but it, it feels like when you're watching this team, Nuno, that it's Alanga getting on the end of Gibbs White's passes in open play anyway. Um, so, yeah, really good option. Um, yep. I, I think I think if I do free hit, which is looking likely in 29, he'll he'll be a serious contender. Um, Rams, who we've mentioned um, before, went off injured, so, you know, remains to be seen, but... Um, should be uh, hopefully okay. Um, shots on target, uh, we just one, but eleven shots um, and seven inside the box. Um, he's, he should have got um, at least a goal over the last four matches. Uh, we have mentioned him. Garnacho's player I mentioned, um, only five million still. Um, he's had a big chance. He's missed it, but he's had five shots on target and a whopping seventeen shots, twelve yeah. from close range. These are really great stats. Didn't get a goal over the last four matches, but should have got at least a goal, uh, according to this. this. is why I'm keeping him. He's just a handy player, especially with a double. And it, it means you can afford all these other players, um, uh, yeah. like Son and Haaland, etc. Um, kudos at West Ham is next. So let's mention him. Three shots on target. 14 shots. Six inside the box. Um, so Bowen will probably be the main draw. He's not on here because obviously he's you know got, got his hat-trick within this period. But kudos, uh, especially in the game week 29, free hit or not, is it worth getting that double? I mean, they play Villa, don't they? In game week 29. So I... Yeah, I mean, it's it's not an easy game, obviously, but we, we do concede goals. I mean, it, you know, we, we're, we're doing well at the moment because we're scoring quite a few, but we do concede. So I don't mind that. As a, mm. If you want to go down a bit of a different route on 29 and you want to go could do so over Bowen. I, I don't I don't mind that. I think Bowen's probably over a longer period of time the better option. But on a one-off game, you know, you, you could strike lucky there. And um Caduce has shown he can do it before. He's had he was playing very, very well before um before going away earlier this year. So yeah, I think he's a great option, Caduce. Uh, okay. Oh we better we better offer some good content in this. Just seen FPL Bateman's in the live chat, uh who's uh occasionally not 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 so complimentary to content creators we we better hopefully hopefully we'll have some good content for <laughs> you up. uh FPL <laughs> Bateman. um and uh okay uh, brian abomo's on this list i've just put him in there i don't actually know when he's coming back it's going to be at some point well thomas frank did an interview i think it was a couple of weeks ago and he said after the international break which would be game week 30 but then Brentford posted a video this morning on their social media channel and um, he was in training. Now, I don't know whether it is, I don't know whether that's kind of full team training or if that's just slowly integrating him. Frank was pretty adamant that it would be after the international break, though, which is a shame because if he did look like he was going to feature in 29, him and Tony would be pretty much locked onto a lot of free hits, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but just one to keep an eye on, maybe. Uh, um Okay, um, just looking. I'm just looking at the fixtures for Brentford there. So yeah, they've got Arsenal away, 28, not so good. Burnley away, 29, that's nice. Um, then Manchester United, Brighton, Aston Villa, Sheffield United, a whole bunch of great attacking fixtures there. Um, yeah, I mean Tony will be in a few teams, um, but Brian and Bomo uh, with him, um, that could be that could be good. So yeah. Uh, yeah, player to keep an eye on, especially if you're looking for um, a very, very low owned player, which is what this show is all about um, to help climb up. Yeah. The and the great thing about the free hit is you can make a call on that at the very, very last moment. You can get, gather all the information you need and um, it's probably unlikely that he'll play, but just, just want to monitor. Uh, okay. Uh, FPL Bateman has said, he's always a fan of us. Um, so thanks a lot. <laughs> and um, uh, Nico has appeared in the live chat using his mum's YouTube uh, under the name of Irene Foster. So that's a, a latest development in the live chat there going on. <laughs> uh, so uh, welcome, Nico, Irene, and Debbie um, uh, Wayne. But uh, I'd almost said it again. Bruno Fernandez is next, still on the list, on the team news. You know how we could mispronounce names and stuff. I, I had a complete mind melt and called him Banana. <laughs> I can't even say it. Fernandez, <laughs> Fernandez <laughs> on the team news, <laughs> uh, which went down really well. Um, but he's still on this list as well. We spoke about Manchester United. Ten shots, five inside the box, five on target. So ticking along, but Manchester United aren't dwelling. We have spoken about them. Tavernier, we've spoken about. Still on this list, though. Um, Eleven shots, seven inside the box. Been marginally underperforming. Should have got... Um, uh, almost a goal over this period no goals a uh, couple of big chances but 
Yeah, it's he, he's a tricky one. Not it's, it, for me. It's just minutes, really. I haven't even really looked at his form. Yeah, I do. I do like. I do like the idea of getting a second Bournemouth attacker if you're free hitting in 29, because you obviously then get Everton and Palace and Luton after that. So it's a really good run of fixtures for Bournemouth. Um, and I think in a double, I'd feel more confident playing Tavernier because he's probably going to start one and come off the bench in the other. He might get two starts, you don't know, but probably Sinistero is going to eat into his minutes somewhat. Um so I don't, I don't, I don't mind it, but there is, there is risk. There is a bit of risk there, of course. And um, after that, when you go into single game weeks, it's it's a bit riskier playing him. But he's, I think he's started twenty games this year, so it's not like he's. That's maybe more than we've given him credit for with with with, with me saying that. So I think I think he can be okay, but he was he wasn't very good at the weekend. So that's something to keep yeah. in mind. Yeah, right. definitely. Um, Odebert at Burnley, people aren't going to go there. One big chance he's missed it. One shot on target, um, but it must have been good because he's got an XG delta as in he's underperformed. Um, basically two thirds worth of a goal. So that big chance was two thirds worth of a goal. Um, he should have been getting and nine shots, three on target. I, I'm I'm just going to skip over. I just, no one is going to get a Burnley player. Burnley, Sheffield United, down and out. Let's ignore them. Yeah, he did play as a number ten at the weekend. He's been on the wing most of it, and he played an essential role. Yeah. But Burnley just um, Burnley looked okay at the weekend. Mm. Just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, and they're very and they're very poor defensively. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're not looking at them. Yeah. Uh, Martinelli's still here. Good stuff. Um, mm. So um, yeah, it, it, he has had a goal, and uh, he has uh, obviously an assist as well recently. So last four matches. Um, just that one shot on target, but 10 shots inside the box. Um, I've got what here says one shot. Um, that's probably the other way around. Um, so um, I don't know if you, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, that, that will be just a misbe- I think that is actually 10 shots. And I think most of them are inside the box because he does that, does that move, doesn't he, down the wing where he cuts yeah, in by the byline and then tries another shot le- down there. My- Maybe eleven shots, ten shots it in could the be box, 11, something but like yeah, that. that's um, mm-hmm. that'll be a blunder on my part, just um, inputting the wrong number in there. But um, ten shots inside the box is what you need to know. That's that's what yeah. he does. So yeah, Martinelli on my radar. Um, okay, let's have a look at the latest assist imminent table before we get to those questions in the live chat. Uh, oh, well, this is good news for me because I'm keeping him. Phil Foden, he's top. Um, as well as his goal scoring exploits, it's his assists where um, it could be uh, proved fruitful against uh, Liverpool. But you know, you never know. He is a player of quality. If they're going to breach Liverpool's back line, going to need a bit of quality. Um, 11 chances created. He's had 11 corners, three goals, but no assists, seven successful crosses, and should have got um, at least at least one, maybe two um, assists over the last four matches. Um, yeah, I mean, we've spoken about him at length. He, he's he's a reluctant sell for some who need others, but he's a keep for me at the moment. Um, uh, Bernardes, yeah, yeah uh, almost said Bernandez for Silva again. <laughs> uh, Silva, a Man City, um, he's a 6.3. Um, uh, just to highlight him again, he's still here, looking really impressive. 17 chances created, last four matches, seven corners, five successful crosses, similar to Foden with the expected assist delta um underperforming but yeah we've spoken about city the the people won't go for more of these types of players because they'll be targeting those with doubles and blanks etc or playing in blanks fernandez at chelsea um he's always on this table seven chances created uh one successful cross don't think people would go there with Chelsea's fixtures, which is Newcastle. Oh, they're all right, actually, the fixtures, but I don't think they're going to go for Fernandes. It's, it's Palmer or Bust, really. Um, Gameris at Newcastle, seven chances created. Two corners, two goals, four successful crosses. Um, yeah, Newcastle are a funny one, aren't they? Because they've got sort of quite good fixtures, but they do blank in 29. And we've all got it in our heads that they're just rubbish at the back now, but they could be improving and their attack could be improving. Gamerish could be one to consider. I wouldn't, I'm not writing off Newcastle, but I think that you'd probably put Gordon, well, you would put Gordon ahead of Gamares and you'd also put maybe Isak now. He's kind of starting to get some minutes in, in and starting to play a bit more regularly. 
I actually quite like those those fixtures when they come back after the blank because they've got West Ham at Everton at home and they're much better at home than away Newcastle. Um, and then even then they go to Craven Cottage after that. So, yeah, I don't, I don't mind Newcastle then, but I don't think it'd be Gomarish I'd look at. No, no. I mean, I might oh, if I've if I'm in the mood, <laughs> I might go for a Newcastle player. If I, especially if I need yeah. a sort of enabler. But yeah, West Ham and Everton and Tottenham all at home within that that mm-hmm. lovely group of fixtures between thirty and thirty three. Um, yeah, yeah, that is that is good, and especially in the way fixtures pretty good as well against Fulham. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Gordon I'm, Gordon's been so reliable at home as well. I mean, he just I think he's blanked once all season at home or something like that. So he he could be a serious option. Um, if people are going to wild card in thirty, they're dead end in. You know, he could be one to get in. Um, Alex in the live chat says, uh, "Bruno Gamerish, what are you smoking?" Um, well, that's the whole point of this. We mentioned these names of these players in here, and then as we showed with the uh, how we got on last week. They're starting to get returns. People turn their nose up at Rodri, but as um, uh, as Tom said, that uh, he's a, he's actually second only to Salah for double digit hauls this season, and that's the whole point of this. It's these exactly. I mean, that Alex, that's exactly the response we want. What what are you smoking by recommending these players? And hey, Preston, yeah, Alfie Doughty, um, we recommended a few weeks ago. Neto, we yeah, recommended I mean, in game week one. Yeah, I mean, this isn't just a see the coming. These, these tables are just pulling stats. You know, it isn't our recommendations necessarily. And now we're going through each player, player by player, and trying to ascertain if they are options. A lot of the time, yeah, you're right. I mean, we've had Cunha on this list in the first yeah. few weeks and all of the Wolves boys and everybody was like, no, no. And now they're, they've become real big options for people now. I don't think that'll happen with Gamarish, but a lot of the players on the players on these tables, they, they will throw up some names that a couple of months down the line, you'll be thinking, oh yeah, they're good options for the team. So um yeah, they're not necessarily recommendations, though. Not every player on this list is a recommendation. No. And the next name certainly isn't Ericsson at Manchester United. Just yeah. minutes. But nevertheless, in his last four matches, worth pointing out, he's created 10 chances and 10 corners. But, you know, usually as a sub these days, five successful crosses. Um, uh, Tavernier, Bournemouth, we have mentioned, still on the table. That is useful. Um, 12 corners, seven chances created. Didn't pass his audition for us last time out, but across the season perhaps might have done enough to be a differential uh, to go for, especially at 5.4, five successful crosses. It could be worth, he could be worth a go. I mean, I, mm. I, I personally won't because I don't have a space, but it could be worth it. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. I think if you're free hitting 29, I think getting a second Bournemouth attacker in alongside Solanke makes a lot more sense. So. Yeah. Um, Pereira at Fulham so we mentioned about Fulham about William um, we mentioned about their fixtures they're very good um, and you have mentioned that Pereira is now in this sort of um, uh, inverted winger attacking role coming in more centrally and and I guess what this these stats are, are starting to show about how attacking is he's had 30, well, 13 corners 10 chances he's created 8 successful crosses um, should have got um, getting on for an assist over this time he hasn't uh, and didn't get a goal. But yeah, Pereira, 5.3. Certainly don't rule him out if I'm looking for an enabler. He looks, looks good to get in, I think. Yeah, there's a few Fulham midfielders, isn't there? Because you've got Iwobi, if Willian gets back into the team. You've got Harry Wilson, who's been playing. You've got Munitz, the striker. So there's actually, there's quite a few at Fulham who, who could be interesting. I don't quite know who's the best at the moment, but Pereira seems to be the, the creator in that setup, certainly. Yeah. Um, uh, SA, we've spoken about there, just to work his back. Still on here, so he's got... He's, He's got his goal scoring, but his is assist potential. Um, he's had three successful crosses, 13 corners, eight chances created. These are the last four matches he's played, by the way. No assist, should have got about half an assist. Um, so getting on for, for an assist uh, in this game as well. Alex in the live chat says that he was just playing with us. I know, I just I wanted to read that <laughs> comment out because because it summed up what this show is all about. We we say names of players and people go, uh, huh? And then they score the next week. <laughs> so that, that's, that's the aim of the show, really. Um, a stupid hand is next. OK, I say all of that and then I mention a stupid hand. Um, <laughs> OK, so he's a problem. Um, he's had five, well, he's had five corners last four matches, created seven chances, three successful crosses. These aren't the usually good stats anyway for a stupid hand. It displays that he's been obviously a sub for a lot of the time. So he's just not getting the quantity. Um, the fact that he played in this, what was essentially the B team for Brighton against Fulham because they've got the Roma clash coming up and other injuries says to me, I mean, if I wasn't looking to free up money by removing a more expensive defender this week, a Stupinam would be first on the chopping block. He's, 
he's he's gone really for us as an FPL option, isn't he? Yeah, I sold him at the um, the weekend yeah. for um, Zabanyi, the Bournemouth defender. Um, just too much uncertainty week for week. If he plays, he created five chances at the weekend. Great. Although I don't think he'd be to play particularly well from what I saw, but he, you know, he gets into good positions, but you just can't tell if he's ever going to start. And um, unfortunately that's the case with a lot of Brighton players, especially now Europe's coming back, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. It's um, a, a lot of them are going to be hard to pin down, making them yeah. kind of non-options bar, maybe Pascal Gross, I guess. Matoma yeah. went. Oh, Matoma's out, isn't he? So um, it's about Adingra maybe play most matches. Do you think, Joe? Yeah, or yeah, what? Adingra. I mean, this is, I. I mean, those who watch the show and watch our team reveal shows, I got Adingra in ages and ages ago, and then he just kept playing, kept scoring. Yeah. And then it was getting each match yeah. was going on and Europe as well, and I was going, okay, well, I, I'm going to play him, but I'm expecting him to be benched, and it didn't happen. Uh, it just and it didn't didn't happen at all, and eventually it only happened because he got injured. And then even when he was injured and he went to AFCON, he ended up as a medal winner and player of the match in the final. So he's he's superhuman. So I think Yeah, is my top and, then, and and then he came and then he came back, didn't he? And every wasn't he being paraded around the pitch on like the, the weekend? And then yeah. he was back. He was in the team like a couple of days after or something. And he scored twice, didn't he? Oh, so. no. He was actually just he was showing his medal as he was doing it, as he was yeah. kicking and heading the ball in. Yeah, he's an absolutely incredible player. Yeah, um, when Brian's fixtures get a bit better, they are pretty poor though. They do have Nottingham Forest at home, uh, but I think last season that was a nil nil in Deserby's first game. I think. Um, yeah. But they've got Liverpool. Didn't you lose, didn't you lose a what? Lose away against Forest away. Yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm not. Yeah. And it also, it's immediately after the Roma game. Uh, they do. Yeah. Have... And that's that. That's the thing with Villa as well. This week we've got Ajax, and it's you've got to take this into account with yeah. these European matches. Well, uh, although, having said that, uh, having Brian, having seen Ajax in action, that you, you're talking quite a low Championship League One level with Ajax at the moment. Yeah, I think you. Um, you know, they're a European giant, aren't they? And you kind of get your head into it that it's yeah. going to be a very difficult game. And it probably won't be easy, but everything which people have been saying, including yourself, Joe, is that this isn't the Ajax of old and we should be able to get past them relatively easily. Right? Get spearheaded by that um, midfield dynamo Jordan Henderson at the moment as well. So arguably mm, they're even worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Brian have Romo resurgent. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah they're, they're quite, they're you know, yeah, it's a tricky game. But yeah, anyway, they got Liverpool um, away in game week 30, Brentford, Arsenal, Burnley away in 33. Mixed bag, but a couple of really bad fixtures in there. Um, I think it's more sort of when doubles occur. But yeah, my top tip, Dingra. Um, Son is the final name on this list. Uh, eight chances created, two goals. So we all know about his goals. He has got an assist. That's why he's on here. And he's had a successful cross. Um, these are the last four matches he's played. I've been away for international duty for some of this. Um, yeah, um, I'm probably getting him in. Um, I, I, I feel I had a lucky escape. <laughs> uh, he just scored yeah. the one goal. Yeah, I mean, he, I got him in at the weekend because when he's playing through the middle, he's just one of the best assets in the game, isn't he? Mm. Um, he blanked against Villa last time, but he had three goals disallowed in that game for offside. Mm. Um, and our offside trap is generally very, very good. But if it does slip at any moment at the weekend, you can be sure Son will be the player looking to exploit it. And I think even for those who are free hitting in 29, you probably still want Son in because of that game week 30 game against Luton. Mm. So I saw it as a bit of a no brainer getting in free hit or not last week, just get him in. And um, I expect him to do very well. Right. Yeah. Um, all of those reasons. I remember the last Villa game, wasn't it with Son? I don't think he got any returns. I can't remember. No. I don't remember it well, but he was offside and had VAR goals yeah. rolled out. All across the yeah, match. Yeah, he's, yeah, it's the hat trick. Yeah, he just could have got had a hat trick of goals, dis, hat trick yeah. of goals disallowed. So, um, if any tiredness kind of creeps in from that Ajax match mm. and that offside trap isn't 100% on it, he's going to be the balls. Madison's Madison, who tends to do well against Villa as well, he's going to be the one playing it through and um, and looking to exploit it. So, I hope it doesn't happen, but if the, you know, he is, um, he looks a good option for 28. Yeah, I'd, I'd sort of pinpointed this Villa game 
as the game I would look at Son and just hope for the best against Palace. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, new new owners know what he's all about anyway, and old yeah. owners like me um, as well. Um, let's have a look at some questions then in the live chat. Um, okay, so we've had a few. We've we've tried to answer a few of them already, but I'll, I'll uh, if you can put your questions in the live chat, I'll try and go up a bit and see if we can get any more um any questions there um uh yun asks uh is it worth doing a minus eight for neto and zabanye uh and then he's free hitting in 29 or wild card this week and save the free hit okay that's a good strategy question basically the premise is should you take hits to get yourself up for this double and then ignore 29 free hit it or I know as Andy's doing on the Scoutcast, and I urge people to go back and have a look at last night's Scoutcast, Andy revealed his wildcard team. He's offering the different strategy, wildcarding this week, setting yourself up for 28, setting yourself up for 29, and then you can free hit later, 34, 37. Yeah, yeah and I, don't, I have looked at that game week 28 wildcard, and, um, you know, you can, like you say, you can set yourself up with probably five doublers or maybe more for um, five doublers for 28. You can cover 29, make sure you're okay for that. The only issue that I may be seeing it is that you might be left with some players who you don't necessarily want long-term. Um, I think Bournemouth are okay for 30, 31 and 32, but you'll probably have a triple up for those matches if you wildcard this week. Luton, you're probably going to get double Luton in. And then they come back, obviously, after the, the, the 29 and they've got Tottenham and Arsenal away. So just have a look at the, t just just go and compare the team that you build, what you, you know, if you do free hit in 29, you're probably going to delay that wild card a little bit longer, aren't you? Because a lot of the players that you get back are going to be okay for 30 and 31. So so then if you've got your bench boost, that might actually be okay. I'm, I mean, if you're going to free hit in 29, Joe, what are you... Um, a, a later wild card, then I presume. Yeah, I'm the, I mean, I'm the, looking at the, the use, plan. I or... think, I think. Uh, so I'm just trying to close something. Annoying pop up box has just appeared on my screen. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking to uh, wild cards in uh, probably 35. Um, so very late, yeah. Um, and then uh... with a with a view because I do like a wild card, then a bench boost. Because the long yeah. the, the, the longer you period you leave if you say say for example you're going to bench boost in 37 which looks the best time to do it lots and lots of doubles and you wildcard in game week 30 you've got a long time to go and then by then all your yeah. lovely bench players could all be and you end up taking hits and, to get replacements in and and, hmm. and that's applicable to if you wildcard if the you, the person who sent this question in if they've still got a bench boost and they're wildcarding now that's something to consider, isn't it? Because you're probably going to bench boost in 34 or 37. Yeah. So setting up now is difficult for that. So yeah. I'm not saying that has to be like a deal breaker, but it's just something you've got to sit down and plan and have a rough yeah. idea of who's going to double in 34. And then, um, yeah, the ideal scenario for everybody is to wild card and bench boost the week after. Um, just, and we'll know after game week 29, I think it is, we'll know the 34 and 37 fixtures all have a very good idea of them. I think it's around then. Mm -hmm. Um but um, so what, what, what I'll be looking at is hopefully the way the fixtures plan out, I can work towards just using transfers, getting a good um, selection for 34 of doublers. And I've got a sort of I don't have too many triple ups and things. So, for example, I've got a Palace player already. I've got a Manchester United player already. These are the sorts of players that might double and be handy. So if I've already got them in place, it's OK. Um, and I'm hoping yeah, that I suppose. Um... Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, and hopefully those fixtures between 30 and 34, the team I've got, um, you know, can can withstand them. And obviously it will have some Luton players in. It will have some Bournemouth players in. They've got good fixtures. Um, obviously Man City have got quite a nice bunch of fixtures. They've got Villa, Crystal Palace and Luton in there. So keeping Haaland, for example, is fine. Fine and dandy. Keeping Foden even, fine. Yeah, I think my only concern with playing the wild card in 35 and or 36 or mm. late something like that is that i need to make up some ground i think i'm i think i'm probably 40 something points behind you joe mm. so my only concern is leaving the wild card till that late yeah. 
do I need to play it a bit earlier than that? But I suppose if I free hit in 29, which I think I need to, I've only got five players at the moment for 29. I guess then after that, I can just take it week by week. And if I need to do a wild card in 32, 33, I could do that. The option's there. Um, but I think in your position where you've got a good rank, um, you can absolutely leave it till a, till a little bit later and then look for a big, big bench boost when you're getting 120, 130 points, something like that. So. Yeah, I do you remember last year? It all depends when the wild card are and the doubles and when they fall. I think it was quite advantageous last year to play it around the sort of some point between game week 27 and 30, just the way the, the fixtures yeah. fell and there was more doubles. Yeah. Um, and that worked out. And I think those that did it around that time worked out well because they'd set themselves up really well um, for later doubles as well because you sort of knew what was going to happen. But this year's a bit up in the air. We don't know about 34. There's going to be some blanks, we think, as well in there. So some we think mm -hmm. are going to double might actually have a single. Um, and so yeah. so it's, 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 it's quite tricky. But we'll, we'll talk about that on our, our team reveal video. Um, similar question here on that theme of a wild card. 28 um the nitty-gritty of the players here from wayne asked he's looking for a fifth choice midfielder in his wild card for 28 um his options are barkley alanga and madison um all good options i i personally would say either just go for madison or go for barkley then madison yeah okay so he's he's did he say he's wild carding now? Is yeah. that right? And he's yeah. looking for a fifth midfielder. So yeah. it needs to be like recent. Yeah. So like Madison, um, Alanga, obviously. I mean, Palmer's still a really good option, but obviously he's got that blank. Yeah. So I don't know whether you can so accommodate for that him or it's not. Specifically Barkley, Alanga or Madison. I mean, they're all great oh, options. Okay. But I, I would just the volume of fixtures. You've got Barkley's got two. And then he also plays in 29. So presumably you'll, you're not free hitting in 29 if you're wild carding 28. And then with Luton playing Tottenham in 30, that could be a chance to just hop back onto Madison or just save yourself and just go for Madison. As you said. Yeah, you think I that... think, I think that, yeah, I think that's right, Joe. I think if you, if you don't want to pack plant, pencil in any future transfers just get Madison now but if you do think you can be a bit flexible obviously Barkley's probably going to outscore him in the double um but it just depends if you want to start putting future moves in place or not okay uh Williams Tropical Farm has dropped into the live chat from uh Lau um he's down from 16k last month to 260k um there's quite a few managers that's happened to uh, he's still got the triple captain uh and wild card any advice well I, th I think I, I mean if you go back or you were listening about five minutes ago when Tom was answering, was talking about moving up the league, what he's going to do. Um, he's looking to get a high rank. So follow, follow that advice. Um, any, anything else you'd like to add to that about sort of moving up to, cause he's sort of similar to where you are in the ranking at the moment where you, where you want to get. Yeah, to. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult because you kind of feel like you're going to need to take some calculated risks, mm. but at the same time, you don't just want to throw it all away. You know, when you think about those big double game weeks and those big bench boost weeks coming up, you can gain 30, 40 points on managers. And if, if you play it well and, and everything falls for you. So it's that, it's like, for instance, I don't think going against Solanke captain is sensible this week. I think that there's too much to lose with that. So I'm going to go with that. But if I'm free hitting in 29, I might go for something like a Caduce over a Bowen or something like that, or go for maybe um, a different captain that week. So it's just about taking a few gambles, but but not going completely crazy with it and being at 500k in a couple of weeks time, if you know what I mean. So, um, but I do think there's still plenty to play for. There's still a lot of chips still got, you know, 10 or so game weeks to go. So there's plenty of time to catch up. I mean, um, yeah, I think I'm probably about four, I think I'm about 40 points off the top 100k, which is where I kind of want to be. And, and so, but, but that could be made up, you know, quick that could be made up in a couple of game weeks if it if it, if you know if you play a good free hit or something like that. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, players like say Ross Barkley, um, I'm probably not going to get, um, but he could easily get twenty points. He could easily get that two double two ten point returns across this double. Yeah, he's he's been close. I mean, I've owned him for a few weeks, and um, 
He's been he's been he's been teetering on getting re returns, and when he does get a return, he'll do well for bonus because of the way he, ch he creates chances. I don't think any player's created more chances than him over something like the last seven game weeks. So, feels like something could come for him. He is quite deep in the build up play. He's always kind of quite restricted on how much he doesn't kind of attack the box that much. But you know he's you know he's got set he's got some set pieces anyway and he loves a shot from range as well so you might get luckier with those um, those two games against palace and bournemouth and then forest in in 29 if you're not free hitting as well no. uh, ruben in the live chat points out that uh, based on a lot of projected scores a decent free hit team in 29 would score around 50 points that would be great for me because i've only got about two or three players so that would probably be about 40 points more than my actual current team will get so that would be more than more than mm. happy with that um uh, Lennox mm -hmm. asks I'm on no free hit 29 um so he's considered so he's looking at sort of using transfers to get around all of this um would you consider Munez at Fulham over Tony for 29 and this is key that would enable him to get Salah in for free in game week 30 ah uh, yeah um yeah because I think so we spoke about this yeah. before we came yeah. on earlier didn't we Joe and we both said that Salah in 30 feels really important mm. with Brighton at home yeah. and Sheffield United at home. And I think Salah is probably your captain in, in game week 30, given that City are playing Arsenal. To, Son is an alternative. Son could do well as well at home against Luton. But I do think Salah feels important. So working that into your strategy, I think, is, yeah. is a wise thing to do. I mean... Tony's got that great fixture against Burnley, hasn't he? Mm. Um, so it is a very, in isolation, I'd prefer Tony over Munitz, but if Munitz unlocks that Salah move, yeah. um, and, and, and Munitz has got good, you know, he plays Sheffield United and Forest after the blank as well. So it's not just, don't just focus on that blank. Yeah. It's what happens after that as well. So yeah, I think I would give serious consideration to that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, just uh, probably a couple more questions got time for um, uh, Mark A. Similar thing, Fulham. I mean, a lot of love for Fulham. They are second in the season ticker for good reason. Um, is a Fulham defender a good option um, until he wild cards around the game at 31, Mark? Um, ooh, I mean, they do have all right fixtures. They've got Wolves away, Sheffield United away, Nottingham Forest in game at 30 as well. Obviously Tottenham in 29. Um yeah, if, if someone was, I mean, I hadn't even, I hadn't even considered the Fulham defence, so I haven't even looked at him. I don't even know who it is now. <laughs> but if you were to get a Fulham Think, defender, uh, who would you get? Uh, Robinson would be oh. the one. He's the left back. He's been the most, the, 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 the kind of the best creator in that group. Um, so I think you have got Castagne at right back, haven't you? And Tete's there as well, but hasn't been playing so much. So it would be Robinson or, or Leno in goal, obviously as well. The only thing I suppose a little bit off-putting is three of the next four away from home and they're not at Craven Cottage and the one that they are, it's Tottenham. I don't think I'd say a Fulham defender is a priority, but if they're part of a rotation and it works for your team, then not totally against it. What did he say his chip strategy? Did he say what he or she say what they were doing? Uh, or, um, no. No, I don't think don't so. Worry. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think if you're, if you're not free-hitting in, in 29, then it's... Play, players around those prices are kind of doubting. Oh, hang on. Yes. Sorry. Not free hitting in 29. And yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. Not free hitting in 29. So, looking to carry through. Um, I'd maybe look to get a dogie over them and get. I know he's a little bit more expensive, but given what comes after, okay. probably gotcha. 0.3 more, 0.4 more, maybe. I'm not sure if that's doable, but I think I would prefer that. So. Okay. A uh, resident Fulham expert, Colmer, says he's got Leno. Um, so, yeah, Leno is a player yeah, I, I have yet mm. to own it this season, but I've spoken about how much I haven't either. the Leno Areola probably still mm. is one of the, the, the great partnerships here. Um, it's certainly been better than the Areola Debravka one. Who did you play at the weekend, Joe? Um, Kelleher. Ah, oh, well, you did well then. So he got um, nine, didn't he? Yeah. yeah so. um, do you, how, how about you, Areola? Or? Dubravka. I played Dubravka. Areola was all right, did all right, though, so. didn't he? Got... Yeah, I mean, I, I would do it all the, every day. I'd back the Newcastle defence yeah. at home over yeah. West Ham away at Everton, but it's just one of those, isn't it? No. It was one of those we where somehow most goalkeepers did okay, um, which was yeah. handy. Um, yeah, Keller got two saves and three bonus points. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, um, he's actually he's actually done 
well yeah. since replacing yeah. Alisson. I think it's going to be a big test for him this weekend. Um, yeah. But uh, he's done done okay so far. And just final question from Alex here: Game week twenty nine, a one year or Gibbs White? My my answer to that is Alanga. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I try quite. One year he just, um, I don't think he started at the weekend, did it? He's coming back after being out for a bit. Just want to, I don't know if he's getting quite getting the minutes at the moment. So maybe monitor and see what happens at Brighton and then make a call. When he plays, he's he's another, you know, he's another player who's heavily involved in their goals, like Alanga. But yeah, I think I'd probably go for one of the midfielders. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, out of those, choice of those two, Gibbs White for me, but my actual mm-hmm. choice is neither Alanga. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, thanks everyone for joining us in the live chat. Um, thanks for those who are watching and listening after the event. Um, just a reminder, do press that like button helps us out and do remember to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos and podcasts and check out fantasyfootballscout.co.uk for latest membership offers to access all the tools and gadgets to help you climb up your mini leagues. Uh, meanwhile, good luck everyone with your game week. Um, Tom, thanks for joining me and good luck with your game week too. Cheers, Jack.